Good morning, everyone. Uh, I guess it's like uh, week four of our uh, remote learning. Uh, before I got up to start doing this, I was looking at uh, the news, and I actually heard uh, some good news. So I don't know if you've heard it or not yet, or uh, you watch the news on a regular basis because most of it's bad news. Uh, but if you do, you'll notice that they said uh, it looks like we're reaching the apex of this uh, pandemic and hopefully uh, you know in a short time maybe we'll be able to meet <laughs> meet face to face again in the classrooms the cat and the dog are uh, going bananas a little bit they're kind of bored too I guess having everyone around all the time I, I don't know uh, it's making them crazy but uh, I'm going to start off with uh, answering the couple of questions that I had, uh, one question was on specifically, what do we mean when we say Delta? Or, or I type Delta into uh, an explanation somewhere. Delta is simply the change in. Right? Delta H is the change in heat. Delta S is the change in entropy, which is randomness or disorder. And then we always talked about previously in that um, energy formula, MC Delta T, the change in temperature. Delta simply means change in and it's last condition minus starting condition. Final minus initial products minus reactants. Reactants are first, products are last. That's why when we have increases in entropy, delta S is positive. When we have exothermic reactions, delta H is negative. Delta H is negative because products are low and reactants are high. So that's what delta is. And then uh, two other questions came up on questions 19 and 66. 19 I'll be reviewing anyhow, but I think uh, 19 dealt with looking up information on reference table I, as did question number 20, uh, to try and determine what's exothermic. They both specifically asked for exothermic reactions, 19 and 20. Uh, so three of them have positive values from reference table I, one of them has a ne uh, negative value. And then uh, 66 was a shifting question. Uh, I know I didn't ask you to go up to 66 uh, for today. I'll be reviewing that one tomorrow. But being the question came up, I will always uh, very happily answer a question that's given to me. Uh, 66, uh, the condition, uh, I believe it was pressure, uh, put on the system, sent the reaction over to the right. The reason being, on the left, we had four HCLs and 502s. Remember, the coefficient indicates the number of moles of gases. And on the right, it was 2Cl2 and 2H2s, or rather 2H2Os. I can't read my handwriting here. I wrote myself some notes what to respond. So that's four gases. Under high pressure, five gases will compress and be four gases to alleviate the stress of the pressure driving the reaction to the right. So everything on the right is more, everything on the left is less. So uh, I guess the Cl2 uh, will increase, right? Because the Cl2 is on the right. Okay, now I'll cover that one again uh, tomorrow. All right, uh, let's start by focusing on the, the questions. I think I left you off with uh, question number 11, or we did one through 10, we're starting with 11. And it says each of four test tubes contain different concentrations and a cube of zinc. In which test tube is the reaction the fastest? Well, this is simply just based on concentration. No matter what the test tubes look like, because sometimes they have different levels of in them, it's just based on the concentration. So the one with the highest concentration is going to be the fastest, and that looks like choice A. Okay. All right. Uh, it's 11 i got to find. Okay, 12. These next couple of questions ask about, I think, surface area. 12, 13, and 14 do. Okay. Uh, 12 says, uh, the reaction given, notice the Fe is a solid. Okay. Uh, everything else is pretty much aqueous or gas, so the surface area can only affect the, the solid. Right. It says, in the reaction, uh, we occur more quickly when powdered iron is used. Why? Okay. Uh, C, it has greater surface area, so there's more places 
for the collisions to occur. If you take an ice cube, right, and cut it, ice cube has um, <laughs> six sides. Sorry, I had to think about that. Brain's uh, not totally functioning yet this morning, I guess. I don't know. But ice cube has six sides. When you cut it open, you expose two more sides. Now you have 12 surfaces instead of six. So there's more places for those collisions to happen. Granted, some of those surfaces are smaller, but in total, you have more surface because now you can contact the inside of that cube where you cut it. Okay. Uh, number 13, at STP, 4 grams of zinc will react faster in dilute hydrochloric acid. Uh, when? When it is C, powdered. Number 14, right? again, uh, if we can underline the last three words of that question, powdered zinc has C, more surface area. When it's powdered, it will react more quickly. Uh, 15, 16, and 17 seem to ask about a catalyst. Okay, So that's the key word in any of these. Uh, number 15, underline that word catalyst. What does it do? C, it lowers the activation energy. Number 16, too, it's kind of a similar thing. Again, underline that word catalyst. And what does it do? Well, it lowers, well, that's part of the answer. The catalyst is going to make the reaction happen faster. So it's, I think uh, C and D had that, increases rate. And then the Y, why? Because it lowers the activation energy. The new pathway, the new shape of the curve that it has, the hill is now lower. It doesn't have to go up so high. Okay, like on the diagram that I still have written behind me, it doesn't have to go up as high, so it reacts faster. So that's D. Okay, so 14, 15, 16, we're CCD. Uh, 17, which statement describes how a catalyst increases the rate? Uh, the catalyst provides uh, a different pathway, and this different pathway has lower activation energy. So that's B. The catalyst provides an alternate pathway. Okay, reaction is going to happen differently. Specifics as to how it changes it, you don't need to know, but it does. The catalyst provides an alternate reaction pathway, and that pathway has lower activation energy. So 17 is B. Uh, 18 is D. Uh, underline the word exothermic. Exothermic is where the products are lower. So the, the product value is lower. That's why it has a negative delta H you're going to subtract a smaller number from a bigger number, you're going to come up with a negative. Uh, that's why 19 and 20 are asking for exothermic reactions. Uh, just given a list of either compounds like you had in 19 or uh, specific reactions in 20, uh, you still use reference table I. Uh, number 19, you're going to find the solution process involving the production of NaOH AQ. That one turns out to be negative. That was B. And in number 20, it's just, here's all the reactions all written out. All you have to do is find the one with the negative. Three have positive. One has negative. The negative is the exothermic. So 19 and 20 were both B. <clears throat> number 21, given the balanced equation representing that reaction, which statement explains why the term energy is on the right? When it's on the right, it shows the energy that is produced. It's the product energy. So uh, it's the energy released as the bonds in copper sulfide form. So that would be D. Number 22. Just an interesting thing to show you here. It really doesn't affect anything. You, just in case you've seen it somewhere else and say, well, why is that? That's weird. Uh, you see the word H2O, well, not the word H2O, but the formula for H2O is printed over the arrow. Uh, what that indicates is that water is actually not taking part in the reaction. Water isn't reacting. It's not a reactant, but it's the medium by which it's there. So this is being done in water. Water is really not reacting, but water is present. So it's indicating the presence of water, but it's not actually part of a balanced chemical equation. All right. Uh... It says, given the, the balanced chemical equation, okay, number 22, which statement best describes this process? Well, the energy is on the left, so it's endothermic. <clears throat> and uh, 
It's going from a solid, the KNO3 is a solid, to a mixture of aqueous ions, which has higher entropy. So it's endothermic, and entropy is going to increase, which is A. Mm -hmm. Number 23, which is exothermic, uh, solid to liquid to gas. Sorry, Harry's on the mic. Solid to liquid to gas. This is going up in energy. This is your endo. Endo goes up. Right? And remember, it's a phase diagram where it looks something like this. Right? Same thing, overlapping information. Two different topics, matter and energy. Can you see that? The lighting is not great today. I need to get camera lights for this paper. Okay. All right. So that's the direction of endothermic. And there's the phase diagram shown. We've spent time with phase diagrams on the last topic. We're not going to be looking at phase diagrams during this topic. <clears throat> We're not going to be looking at phase diagrams on this topic. But again, it's review. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to be taking a Regents exam, whether they, uh, you know, hold them off and make you take them in August, or uh, they do have you take them still in June. <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> so we're still going to need to review that. All right. Uh, so choice A, it says the freezing of water. Okay. So water is a liquid that's going back to a solid. All right, liquid to solid, that's opposite of this, which is endo. If we look at the other three choices, melting of iron, that's solid to liquid. Vaporization is liquid to gas. Sublimation is solid to gas. The other three go in the same direction that I have printed here, which is the endothermic direction. Number 24, a student observed, oh, so by the way, the answer was A. Uh, a student observed that when sodium hydroxide was dissolved in water, the temperature of the water increased. So the sodium hydroxide has energy. When you put it in water, it releases that energy. In releasing that energy, the water gets hotter, okay? So that the dissolving of the sodium hydroxide is exothermic. We have a couple of questions here that are going to deal with this. When an exothermic reaction happens, the exothermic, the substances in that exothermic reaction, they release the energy that causes the environment around them to get hotter. So when the environment is getting hotter, the reaction is exothermic. Say a match or a fire, right? Cold winter day, you set a little fire in a fire pit, right? That reaction in the fire pit is exothermic. It releases heat energy. The environment around it gets warmer. Number 25, when ammonium chloride crystals are dissolved in water, the temperature of the water decreases. Why? The ammonium chloride crystals are taking in heat. The ammonium chloride crystals are absorbing heat. The ammonium chloride is endothermic, again, and that reaction absorbs the heat so the water gets colder. Number 26 this is actually a good question for understanding the concept that I'm trying to explain. Salt A, when salt A is dissolving, look at your table. When salt A dissolves, the temperature goes from 25 to 30. That's going to be exo. Salt B, it goes from 25 to 20. That's endo. So the answer is going to be the dissolving salt A is exothermic and the dissolving of salt B is endothermic. Number 27, uh, it's just asking us the formula. It's products minus reactants, beginning minus end. So again, that's D, potential energy of the products minus potential energy of the reactants. Delta H is the heat of the reaction. Number 28, given the balanced chemical equation represented here, which statement uh, is true about the reaction? Okay. Uh, we have 91.8, and it's on the right, so it's exo. 
So it's going to be one of the negative ones. And uh, I'm thinking it has to be A. The reason why I'm saying this, uh, it came out a little light. I really can't see the negative very well. I can clearly see the positives in B and D. A and C, it's really hard to see the negatives. So if choice A says maybe your print copy worked out better than mine or you're looking on your uh, device, it says it is exothermic and delta H has a negative 91.8. Number 29, the potential energy of the products compared all right, to the reactants. Okay, heat is on the right. It's exothermic. Okay. I don't know how to get the lighting in here better. I probably need a, like a spotlight on myself. Okay. You know what? I'm going to pause for a sec. All right. I don't know if you can see that any better. I turned off the overhead lights and brought a little lamp closer to the board. I, I'm looking here. I'm more in the shadows, but I think you can see the, uh, the diagram a little bit better. Okay. Uh, P is the product. R is the reactant. That's the shape of it for the exothermic reaction. So the question you should underline the product. The product is less than the reactant and it's exothermic. So that would be A. Number 30, based on reference table I, when two moles of NaOH dissolves in water, okay, uh, first off, when you look on table I, you're going to see a, a value of 44.5 kilojoules being released, okay? And uh, it says that it's negative, so it's exothermic, but now the reaction on table I says one mole underline the two moles, so you're going to have to double the amount of heat. So it's going to be 89 kilojoules of heat energy is released, therefore the water temperature is going to go up because of it. So it releases heat energy, the temperature of the water goes up. Number 31, according to uh, reference table I, in which reaction do the products have higher energy? Well, if the products have higher energy, this is exothermic. If we shift it, the products are higher. That's endothermic, okay? So we're looking for the endothermic one. And if we look them up, A, B, and D are negative, the only one that's positive is C. Number 32, uh, each interval on the x-axis represents 40 kilojoules. So it's 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240. Uh, and then the last one that we actually need is 280. It says each interval is active. The potential energy in kilojoules represents 40. What is the heat of reaction? That's the difference between two of these. It's going to be products minus reactants. The products seem to be at 160, and the reactants seem to be at 120. So it's going to be 160 <clears throat> minus 120, positive 40. We don't really have a, a negative 40. Actually, we do have a negative 40 choice. So the answer is going to be C, plus it's also endothermic. We know it needs to be positive. <clears throat> 33, which statement describes the change that occurs? The activation energy. Okay, uh, the reactants start at 40. The activated complex is 50, so it goes up 10. That's the activation energy. And the reaction is exothermic, so that's going to be B. Number 34. All right, which hour represents activation energy of the forward? That's B. That's why 33 is 10, because 34 is B. Okay, A is heat of reactants or potential energy of reactants. C, potential energy of the activated complex. And D, all right, is heat of the products or potential energy of the products. Number 35, a potential energy diagram is shown below. Which letters represent the activation energy of the forward and reverse reaction, respectively? Uh, that's going to be B and C. Okay, B is forward, 
C is reverse, so it's choice C. Number 35, uh, given the reaction, uh, 7.9 is the delta H. So 7.9 is 2. You see line 2? 2 represents 7.9, right? Which uh, represents the heat of reaction? It's 2, and it's 7.9. Didn't ask you that, but they gave it to you in the equation.